What's going on, Internet? Iron Jordan here. So it's been a little bit since we did a tier list video. And as you can see, the tier list as it currently sits is how the decks played back in OPO1. This was an OPO1 tier list. Since then, we have actually gotten quite a few new leaders. OPO2 has been officially legal for about five days. We also got two starter decks since the last time I did a tier list. We got the uh, film deck and we got the, uh, the Navy deck. And so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be going through all of the leaders that I have in the tier list currently, putting them in the position that they need to be in, and then we will uh, talk about the new leaders. So very quickly, we're just going to go through the, uh, the stuff at the top. Zoro, this is a very powerful deck. However, it definitely migrates down to tier 1.5. And the reason why it downgrades to tier 1.5 is because even though the one-drop Rush Zoro deck is very good, it is significantly less good when people know how to play against it. You're going to stomp noobs all day long with this deck. You're going to stomp players that don't know how to play the game and that don't know how to defend against rushers and don't know how to play against aggression. However, you will lose to almost any competent deck with a competent pilot on it because the way to beat this deck is set in stone. You run them out of resources, and then you kill them in one or two turns, right? That is just how you beat this deck. <clears throat> Law. Law loses a lot of playability this set. Um, he will go back to meta prominence in set 3. However, I'm also going to put him in the tier 1.5. I actually potentially might put him in tier 2, because this deck is still good, but it's just, it can't beat black. It just can't. It doesn't have a good matchup into Whitebeard. It's just not a very good, it's not a very good option. It's still a good deck, but it's not a very good option. So I'm putting Law in Tier 2. Next, we're moving on to Kid. Kid is going to move down to Tier 1.5. There's a better green deck. Green is still meta, but there's a better green deck in Set 2 than Kid. Tier 1, Luffy, sorry buddy, you're going down to Tier 2. <clears throat> this deck is still playable. It's still good. You can still win with it, but it is not anywhere near as strong as it was in set one, where the value that you got off of, you know, getting the additional Dawn is not as important as having the hand size that Whitebeard gets. So if you want to play red, then you're better off with that. <clears throat> Kaido is also going to sink down to tier two. Purple did not really get that many good tools. It got input down cards, uh, which are nice and, and all that other stuff. But the Kaido strategy did not get better. You're still very tied to your field spell. You're still very tied to drawing the appropriate um, removal spell at the appropriate time. And black just kind of does that better. So Kaido down to tier 2. So actually, as you can see, none of our old leaders are in tier 1. Dofi is actually going to take a back seat as well and go to tier 2. Uh, Dofi really unfortunately just is not as good as Ivankov. He still has all the struggles into uh, yellow, I'm sorry, not yellow, but green that he used to have, and he struggles into black. It's not a really good format for him. He does come back into prominence a little bit better, maybe jumps back up to tier 1.5 and set 3, but we'll talk about that when it comes out. Blue Purple Croc goes down to playable, I guess. Um, it got a lot of tools. The problem is it just cannot play against the more aggressive decks. And with, um, with it, it, this deck never cracks through Whitebeard's shell. Just like, it's hard to crack through this deck's defenses, but it's hard to crack through Whitebeard's shell. It's nearly impossible for this deck. And you just cannot really beat Zoro. Um, Luffy. Red, green, Luffy. Goes up to tier 2. This deck gets a lot better with the film cards. This deck is way more playable with the film cards. Um, I think it's very, very good. Uh, and now that I'm actually looking at this... I kind of want to put Law at tier 1.5. I just really don't think... Yeah, I'm going to do it. Law, tier 1.5. It's it's still a good deck. It loses to two of the best decks in the game, but it's just... It's still a good deck. The rest of these are going to stay at playable, I guess. Nothing really changed with them. They haven't really gotten any better or worse. There's a better leader. Uh, I, the Odin deck got better cards, I guess, but why would you play Odin when you could play Kinemon? Now we're going to talk about the new stuff. Uh, we're, we're going to start at the back and go and go forward. Sakazuki. This deck is playable, I guess. It's just worse than Smoker. The, the, there is a version of this deck that can work, 
The problem is it needs way more cost redu uh, reducers that do it continually. So you have cards like the three drop Helmepo and the four drop Kuzan and some others that continually apply negative cost effects to your opponent. And when we get to the point where you can constantly have that on static bodies, then maybe this deck will be better. But for now, it's playable, I guess. Shanks goes into the king tier. This deck is terrible. This leader's terrible. His effect sucks. You're just better off playing Kaido 100% of the time. Smoker, tier one. Uh, this deck's very good. Uh, it, it just does everything that Kaido wants to do, but better. You're not relying on a field spell. You can have hand size issues, but a good player is going to know not to just dump their hand whenever they're trying to kill stuff. Uh, you don't waste your kill spells on things that are not really threats to you, and then you won't have that issue. Also, the kill spells come att attached to bodies, big bodies. The, the deck just is very versatile when it comes to dealing with threats. It's phenomenal. So Smoker goes to Tier 1 for sure. It's our first Tier 1 contender. Zephyr. Zephyr's Tier 1.5. This deck's good. Uh, it's not better than Smoker currently. Uh, we'll see what the future holds. Zephyr's strength is that it gets access to all of the good black cards and all the good purple cards. Except for 10-drop Kaido, obviously. But you don't really need 10-drop Kaido. You have 10-drop Kuzan. They don't do the same thing, but it does something better for your deck. Um... <laughs> this 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 deck is good uh it's very scary the main problem this deck has is that you're a four life leader so you're a little susceptible to aggro and also you don't have a lot of counter power you can run a lot of 2k counters but you're only you're limited to how many counter cards you can have in your deck and once your opponent realizes that you only jammed your deck full of 2k counters and you don't really have any 1k counters they're just going to start swinging at you for 5k and that's a little bit of a disadvantage Magellan. It's playable, I guess. It's arguably better than most of these decks on this tier list. Like, I think it's better than maybe Blue Purple Croc when it comes up to the playable, I guess, territory. Uh, this deck is not terrible. It's fine. None of the decks in this tier list are, or in this tier of the list are terrible. I'm not saying the deck is bad. And I know people like the Magellan leader, but it's just really not that good. It doesn't do anything different. It doesn't do anything special. Uh, at least not in a way that is conducive to winning games, which is the problem. Emporio Ivankov. This is my deck of choice for the format, just because I'm a blue player. Well, it's one of my decks of choice because I'm also playing Smoker. But Ivankov is going to go straight to tier 1.5. This is a better blue deck than Dofi was. Uh, it loses to green a little less hard, although it still has a tough time, and it's really bad into Whitebeard. Like, this, if the Whitebeard player is any kind of intelligent, you will never win the game as Ivankov, because you just do not have enough punching power at the end of the game to crack through his shields. Um, but the deck is very good. And it puts blue in a little bit better of a position than it was in last format, where it was, yeah, the color was playable, but it was, you know, objectively worse than purple, you know, red and, and green. Uh, it's it's as good as a lot of those colors. It just doesn't... It, it, this would be a tier one deck if it had better game against Whitebeard, straight up. But it just... It, but it doesn't. Uh, so, tier 1.5 it goes. Sanji. This is a tier two deck. Uh, there's a lot of really cool things that you can do with this deck. There's a lot of really cool tech that you can do with this deck. Um... Buddy Michael has been playing this uh, pretty often, and the deck is sweet. It's actually kind of powerful sometimes. It's just really, really good. Uh, so I think that this deck actually has a little bit of a future in the format. Can't wait to see what it does whenever it gets more support. Kinemon, straight to tier one. Uh, this deck's just good. It's just a better version of Kid. You get a better payoff. You get a better late game threat in the A-drop um, Odin, but you can also still play the A-drop Kid. You get the Yamato that you get to play for three. Okiku you get to play for two. Ryzo you get to play for two. All of these high high or mid-cost guys that you get to play for one cost cheaper. The effect floats, and so you can use it towards the end of your turn instead of having to use it right away. It's just really good. Um, the leader's phenomenal. Green gets just... It's just the toolbox color, and the toolbox is very good. Garp. It's playable, I guess. And the only reason why it's playable is because it's red and black. It's two of the best colors in the game. You get access to the best colors in the game, but it doesn't really do anything beyond that. Um, this deck is not that good. It's fine. A good pilot can win with... A good pilot can win with any... Realistically, a good pilot can win, win with King. But <clears throat> that doesn't mean that the deck is good. You know what I mean? Uh, it, the leader just doesn't do anything. If, if Red Black had a good leader, this might would be a different story, but Garp just doesn't bring you enough to the table himself to justify playing Black outside of Smoker and Red outside of Zoro or Whitebeard. Or even Law. And then moving on to the big daddy, we got Whitebeard. This is the best deck in the format, so it's going straight to Tier 1. 
If you have not played against Whitebeard yet, consider yourself lucky. This deck is so hard to crack. It's insane how defensive he is at the end of the game. You look at the card, you read it, you go, oh, well, you know, I just got to wait till he kills himself, and then I just do the final point of damage. But they have so many def they have so many defensive cards between blockers and between all the good red counters that, that red has, between guard point and radical beam. Like, you're talking about having to go to 11K, or you're, you're talking about having to go to 10K before they have to use more than one card out of their hand to defend it. Because Radical Beam is just so bloated stat-wise. And I, I do think it's, a, it's a, you know, a candidate for the first ever banned card, because that card's insane. It's the main reason why Whitebeard is so hard to kill. But <clears throat> this is the tier list. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you guys agree or disagree. Whenever we start to get further into One Piece, uh, you know, three, four, five sets down the road or whatever, we might not be able to do every single leader. Uh, and we might have to uh, shift to just the ones that are meta relevant. But we've got a couple of, uh, we've got maybe a couple months until that really becomes an issue. So uh, yeah, just to give you a quick little heads up, the, the tier one is, do you want to win? Do you want to be competitive? Play these decks, and if I had to put them in an order, I'd probably do them like uh, like this, with uh, White Beer being first, Kinemon, then Smoker. In tier one point five, I would probably say, I would probably say this is the order for tier one point five. For tier two, I would say the order probably goes something like something like this. Uh. For the King tier, that's pretty easy. Uta's just... Oh man, I don't know. Uta's better than King. <laughs> For the uh, playable, I guessed here. Oh, man. These are all basically the same. They're all basically the same. I'm not touching those. I don't care about this tier. There's too many decks in the playable, I guess, category. But, uh, yeah, no. This is the tier list. This is how I would rank all of the decks in One Piece currently. I don't think I missed any of them. Uh, let me know if I did, and I'll uh, amend it. But uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. What deck are you playing in OPO2? And uh, why did I uh, give your deck a bad rating? <laughs> but I otherwise hope you guys enjoy the video and I'll see you in the next one.